I'm here to do a little in service on the manometer equipped self inflating bag valve mask, otherwise, what we call a BVM in emergency services. And here is the bag valve mask. This is a Mercury design and it has a disc shaped manometer. It was purposely chosen because it resembled the tachometer on a car with a green for safe, yellow for caution, red for danger zone. Anything above green becomes now indica indicative of either an airway obstruction, in other words, fix it, reposition, suction, whatever you need to do, or you are squeezing the bag too hard. So let's go down how this works first. If I plug the outlet right here, I'm gonna take my thumb and plug it, and just squeeze, you'll notice that the bag releases, or the manometer shows a release at about 40 centimeters of water. This is a kind of leftover from the old days. If you're bagging a newborn, a neonate, and they had high resistance to breathing. You can bypass that by taking this little clip. And now, no matter how hard I squeeze, you'll see the arrow pegs out in the red zone. And it's a pretty hard squeeze. The ranges are zero to 20 centimeters in the green, 20 to about 40 in the yellow, and above 40 in the red. One of the big reasons for placing this in the bag valve mask system, which we here in Riverside County uh, have universally adopted, was to avoid overinflating the lungs in patients who are bagging. The overinflation of a patient's lungs, especially when they're in uh, cardiac arrest or they're hemodynamically compromised, almost inevitably will cause a decrease in venous return. In that will then cause reduced cardiac output, which completely works against us. Without cardiac output, we cannot oxygenate and perfuse the body. The other reason is, well, when I was taught how to do CPR back in 1988, I was told that everyone you do rescue breathing on pukes. This was repeated to me back in EMT school back in 93. I said, oh yeah, if you do CPR on someone, they're gonna throw up. Wait a second, vomiting takes a lot of muscular effort. If you're dead, how are you getting muscular effort? Well, we've since known that when you try to bag someone, you almost always push air into the stomach. The higher the pressure, even with a patent airway, you'll also get air down their esophagus into the stomach. Why? One reason is when people are dead, the sphincter at the top of the esophagus, or the one that leads into your stomach, the muscle is already, it's also weak and it's not working. So no matter what you do, you end up pushing air into the stomach. As you charge the stomach with air, like a soda can with pressure, you eventually will cause the person to regurgitate, puke, compromise the airway, make a messy call overall. By staying in the low green, basically below 15 centimeters of water, we found that minimizes the chance of pushing air into the stomach and reduces the amount you push in. To give you another example of how this works, we use a artificial lung with a capacity of 1,000 cc's of air. I squeeze two-handed. This is about 1,000 cc's of inflation. On the side, you can see it's fully inflated. Say now, I just use one hand, which fits within the guidelines of approximately 500 cc's, 300 to 500 cc's of air, for a typical adult, you'll notice, let me make sure I'm not lying here, my pressure stays down in the green.
if for some reason that pressure goes up, then that tells me that I have an obstructed airway <coughs> issue. And I need to either reposition the patient, suction, and otherwise troubleshoot the problem. A person with a patent airway will have very little resistance, and in my experience, even less than this artificial lung. Thanks for watching, and I hope this answered questions that you might have about using a manometer-equipped BVM.